Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today we're getting inky with a non traditional color palette for three Valentines. I'll be using Seriously Awesome, the Giant XOXO, Roar Flip Flop, and the regular Roar, Giant Be My Valentine, Valentine Hearts Border, the Large and Small Mini Slimline Stackables. Lots of hearts, background stencils. I have a sheet of Strathmore cold press watercolor paper and some distress inks. So the main distress inks I'll be using are speckled egg and chipped sapphire, but I'll also use festive berries and a little black soot as well. So right now I'm ink blending with a blender brush the speckled egg and the chip sapphire. I wanted that chip sapphire to be a little darker, so I put a base of black soot under it and then added back in some chip sapphire. I used my die cut machine to cut out the largest of the mini slimline stackables and the giant Be My Valentine, and I cut them out opposite. So there's light on the top and dark on the bottom of the panel and dark on the top, light on the bottom of the giant Be My Valentine. I smushed down some ink, spritzed it with water, and started flicking it on the panel, but then I decided to get more dramatic and just dab the ink with my paintbrush all over. I wanted it darker on the bottom, and I didn't, I didn't want anything too defined, so just coming in and uh, I don't know, scribbling. <laughs> so it's pretty much just dabbing on that ink and then putting in little dots and some bigger dots, just getting it to come up into the center there. And now I'm doing the same thing with the speckled egg. You can see I sped this up a little bit, but I, you know, I wasn't sure about that speckled egg at first. I, I it seemed too dull to me. I like brighter colors and so I didn't really warm up to it at first but then I started using it with some greens and decided I really liked it and then thought hmm, how would this work with the blues and so that's how this color combination came together I think that it's just a nice moody blend and I think it would be great for water or for uh a cloudy sky. I, in this case, I was going for a more masculine valentine. All right, so I'm going to let those dry, set them aside, and clean off my workspace. And once it's dry, I'm going to pull out some white stencil paste. Now, this Lawn Fawn stencil paste is the consistency of marshmallow fluff. Have you ever had marshmallow fluff? I, as a kid, my grandma would make us peanut butter and marshmallow fluff sandwiches. Oh boy, you know, we called them fluffer nutter sandwiches. Did anybody else do that? I don't know, maybe that was just my grandma. Well, as you could see, I blended that speckled egg ink in with that white stencil paste, and I'm just finding on this stencil a few hearts. I'm just gonna put in a few on the bottom, finding a cluster that I think works well for that corner, and spreading on that stencil paste. And it's very smooth, kind of like that marshmallow fluff. But pull that off, and I like that. So I'm going to put a few more hearts on the other side in the corner, and then let that dry. And meanwhile, I die cut out the giant Be My Valentine out of some fun foam. And I kept it in the outer part of the foam. It kind of keeps it in shape. So I put some glue on there and then added my paper die cut right on top. And once that's dry, I can take that out and set that aside. Now, my plan was to add the dinos from Roar and Roar Flip Flop onto this card, but... I, I like that card just the way it was, and I wanted to keep that one simple, but I still wanted to use these dinosaurs. So I stamped them onto the watercolor paper. Now the uh, jet black ink 
from Lawn Fawn. It works great for Copics, but it also is water safe. So I'm using my Distress inks again and painting in some color onto these guys. Now I'm using those same Distress inks. This is Chip Sapphire. I'm putting in a base layer first, kind of finding those shadows and just adding a little bit to them. Now I have a, I'm more comfortable with Copic markers. I use them more. So it's nice to get out of the comfort zone once in a while. And what I, I try not to do is treat them like Copic markers. That's typically what I do is treat everything like it's the same medium. But I'm I'm working at it. I'm working on just adding some color and then letting it dry and adding another layer. That's the nice thing about watercolor is that you can get a lot of texture by giving it layers. I have some regular watercolor paint, but I like to use the Distress ink because now I have the color match <laughs> as my blended background. I'll zoom in a little closer. You can see the colors mixing a bit and layering. And I'm trying to keep some white on the images so, so it looks more like I watercolored it. And I'm not trying to be too careful. I wanted to have those, those layers that aren't quite blending together. Some do, some don't. So that, that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm going for here anyway. Adding a little red is an accent color here. Kind of shows up where everything else is kind of uh, blending together. Putting a little detail, some scales on his belly. And I'm just going back and forth. I'm going to continue adding layers until I'm happy with how they're ending up. I die cut them out with the coordinating dies and set them aside because now, well, now they need a background <laughs> since I, I stole the other one away from them. So I'm putting water onto this panel. Again, this is the Strathmore watercolor paper. It's a cold press paper. And once I have that water on there, I'm coming back in with some ink and adding it to where I have the water, letting it just kind of blossom out there. <laughs> I'm just dabbing one corner and the other until I'm happy with it. There is no rhyme or reason here, no right or wrong, which is the fun thing about making panels. And now I'm coming in with that speckled egg and coming over the chip sapphire with that. And I've sped this one up too. I just want to show you all of what I'm doing, but we'd be here a long time if we waited for everything to dry and then put on the next layer. So you're just seeing the sped up version of it. But coming in with the speckled egg and then once that's dry I'll come back with some more chip sapphire and I'll continue to pull it out towards the center of the panel and this is again the largest of the mini slimline stackables so this is a different technique than I used on the first panel the first one first I ink blended onto the paper but then I wet down my ink and put that on the paper. So ink and water mixed onto dry paper. But this one, I wet the paper and then put the ink on. And again, I am layering. So I let things dry and then I add more layers. And that's, that's the fun thing with watercoloring is just seeing what the next layer will, will bring. <laughs> I could have kept two distinct corners on this panel, but the way this was flowing, I decided to kind of blend it together so that it would meet and keep it soft. So I used just plain water to soften everything up and kind of gives that mottled look to it adding a little more color where I thought it needed it. And then I can put that aside to dry. And here are my little dinos. And I wanted to give them something to stand on. So they're going to stand on the Valentine Hearts border. I'm just measuring how long I need to make this section of red. 
Again, I added a couple of layers and I made another section because I thought I might need some more hearts. And I took those hearts out of the Roar and Roar flip flop, but the Valentine hearts border makes its own hearts. So I used those instead. I'm going to set everything on my panel so I can decide where to put the sentiment. So these little guys are going to be in the white space, so to speak. And Put their little noses together with a heart above and so I can decide I'm going to put that sentiment right underneath them and keep that focal area all together. On to my third card. Now this came out of the fact that here I was making background so hey what about one more. This time I'm putting the ink directly onto the paper and just smushing it on there. Again, this is that same watercolor paper. And this is a smaller of the mini slimline stackables. I'm moving everything out of the way because I'm gonna spray this with a lot of water and just watch it kind of flow together. Move it around just a little bit and I will soak up some of that ink off the edges. I'm trying not to touch it too much it's really going to lighten up as it dries, uh, but I just want to keep as much of the ink on there as possible. But look how much lighter it is now that it's dry. I could add more layers, but I'm going to keep this pretty soft. I'll ink blend some of the other slimline stackables to mat this piece. So a speckled egg and then a chip sapphire one. So a couple of color matched frames. And now I'm going to cut out that panel with the giant XOXO and to cut it out of craft foam as well. And using my glue tube, I'll glue on that top of the XOXO. And this will give us a nice raised, subtle kisses and hugs sentiment right there on the background. I want a more prominent sentiment as well. So ink blending a little background for this sentiment, and it comes from the Seriously Awesome. That's not an easy one to say, Seriously. <laughs> uh, but it's, I think you're awesome. And here's our little bowl of cereal. Now stamp out one of the little faces from that set as well. I colored it in with some Copic markers and a little bit of white gel pen to give it a shine. And I'm cutting it out with the coordinating die. But I'm coming back with the watercolor or the distress ink to shade it some more and give it more of that authentic watercolor look. This has just got to be one of the cutest bowls of cereal ever. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> All right, finishing that up and... I can put it all together and I want that banner to go right across the XOXO. I cut a fishtail on one side and I'm adding the little piece of foam from the inside of one of the O's to one side of my cereal bowl and that will pop it up the same height as the XOXO. And I'm adding the second part of that sentiment right onto the panel. No, seriously, seriously. Seriously, working on that. I'm going to get there. <laughs> it sort of sounds like I'm slurring. <laughs> all right, well, now I can put all of my cards together. So I have card bases that are three and a quarter by six and a quarter. That gives a nice border around the largest of the mini slimline stackables adding my Be My Valentine on top of this panel. And this one is done. I just thought that was enough. I'm just kind of, you can see I'm, I'm eyeballing the center there and use my fingers kind of to center it. All right, some adhesive onto the second panel and onto my card base. Glue on that Valentine hearts border. The perfect little perch for those dinosaurs. And here they are, the Roar and Roar Flip Flop and a little heart that came from the Valentine Hearts border. And this card is all done. All right, 
set that aside and onto my third card. I'm using some tape runner adhesive to add the two layers of panel and also my main panel there. Add the XOXO and the centers with a little glue. And then I decided to brush a little bit of chip sapphire on the edges of that banner so it would show up a little bit. And then here comes our cute little cereal bowl. And all of my cards are finished. So three different ink techniques with essentially two ink colors. I'd love to know what new and exciting color combinations you've found and also what kind of ink backgrounds you like to make and uh, which one of these ink backgrounds would you think you might use most. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!